Hello, this is Mark Tucker with the next in a video series on APL components for viewers of the Dabble Lab channel. In this video, we'll cover data binding. If you want to follow along in APL Ninja, look for the project link in the description. Let's do it. First, let's talk about some of the documentation that's available uh, that has to do with data binding. In this data binding syntax section, we'll learn about uh, the data binding expression, which is uh, some sort of an expression that we'll go over that's enclosed in a string that's enclosed uh, with dollar sign uh, open curly brace and closing uh, brace. So the next thing that we need to talk about is a data binding context. So that context is any data that's available in the APL document that you can uh, bind to or that you can use inside of a data binding expression. This could be values that you put in a data sources document it could be uh, values that Amazon provides you, uh, you know, right off the bat uh, as part of the data context itself, um, or it could be values that you add with the bind tag. To follow along, we just need to understand some of the same uh, concepts. If you're familiar with JavaScript, then you'll see some of these things that make a lot of sense to you. Um, so value types, there's literals, um, you know, strings, there's numbers, there's booleans, null, arrays, maps. Um, you have to understand the concept of truthy and conversion. Um, and there's some uh, resources here that can help you with that. Different operators, um, whether they be arithmetic operators or logical or comparison. Um, so those are things that you're going to uh, be able to use. The null coalescing operator here, uh, the ternary operator, how to access arrays and objects. Um, and a whole series of functions that are built in. And uh, so you have some functions to deal with arrays, with math, different math functions, <clears throat> strings, and time. So all those things that you can review this document to, to better understand. So what we've got here is a, a, a document, and um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on, I like this new feature for APL Ninja with the component highlighting. Um, so as we go through this, you'll notice that things that are uh, displayed none are grayed out here on the left-hand side. Um, and we're going to deal with these different ones here. The first thing we're going to talk about here is this display state. Now, we talked briefly about the, uh, the data binding context. Um, if we go ahead and look here, there are some initial values that are bound to this data binding context. Um, that includes things like display state, um, elapse time, environment, local time, these uh, math string and time functions. UTC performs quite a bit like local time, it's just using UTC time instead, and viewport. So these are all things that are part of the data binding context without you having to do anything. So let's take a look at what that looks like here. So here we've got uh, display state. That was one of the things that were available in the data binding context. And here in APL Ninja, you can actually change um, the value of what that state is. And it will show up and you can see that, that that's uh, working as expected there. Uh, the next value is um, this environment um, agent name and agent version. What you'll notice here um, you know, we've got our simple data binding expression and we're saying uh, give me the environment dot agent name. But we're also inside of a, a string that has, you know, some label here. It has a space which is going to give me a space in between the agent name and version. You can do multiple data binding expressions as part of a string um, or you can um, just combine them together. So for example, in this case, we just have one data binding expression, but we're using you know, concatenation to concatenate um, this value with the string with this other value. Um, so that's another example. Um, that's something that's off of the environment. This is off of the environment um, in the data binding context as well. It's the APL version. Here's uh, you know, two values off of viewport. So we're getting what the screen um, you know, height and width are in uh, display independent pixels. Here we're running a math function and uh, we get the result here of three. We're taking um, some string and we're doing a string function to uppercase that. 
So that's what we get in this case. And here we're using an array function to create an array starting at 1, up to, but not including 10, and uh, skipping, um, you know, stepping up numbers. So it's going to give us odd numbers. So if we do then array index at 0, we get 1, uh, you know, 3, 5, 7, 9. So uh, that's just basically showing how you can do different manipulation uh, and use of other, you know, some of the things that are in that data binding context like we were showing here. Um, next one is, uh, is kind of fun. It's the elapsed time. So when a uh, document loads, um, then you start getting a counter as far as how many milliseconds have uh, happened since the, the screen started. So if I refresh the screen again, it starts back over. Um, <clears throat> and I can use a you know, time format here to, uh, to help me with that. Um, and let's do this other one. This is like a clock. So here we've got hours, minutes, seconds, and uh, some AM, PM indicator. This is the first time that we're encountering bind. Now, if you just think of bind as, hey, I'm gonna create a new variable. I'm gonna create variable T and assign to it the value local time. In this case, I'm gonna create um, another variable H and I'm gonna run this time.hours local time um, to give me how many hours, um, you know, from you know, 0 to you know, 24 uh, for the number of hours. And so what I can do here is in the text, I'm using a data binding expression to say, format the time as hours, minutes, and seconds, but just use um, you know, 1 to 12 for the hour. That's what the lowercase h is for. And that is using this time variable that we bound up above. And then we're also, in order to add the AM PM indicator, then um, what we're doing is we're checking this hour to see if it's greater than or equal to 12, then it's going to be PM or AM. And so that's why we're using the ternary operator. Um, so uh, just very easily, you can add uh, a clock or some sort of a counter on your screen just using some of those functions. So that covers all the stuff with the data binding that's on on it from the very beginning. So let's go ahead and um, <clears throat> move on to the next section. All right. So next, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this one here. So what I've got is a container that's acting as a header. <clears throat> and I've got uh, some text here that is showing that the value is going to be uh, based on data.header text. Now, at the parent component, I can define um, an array, and I can say this is, go this is going to be the data that this container knows about. It's an object that has a uh, key called header text and a value header. And so now I'm just using some data binding to bind to that data. So I can change the value here, and it updates. So you know, that's using data inside of this data property inside of the, the component tree itself. Um, if we want to, here's a situation where we've got a footer. It's very similar. We've got a footer that's going to be using footer text, but we have no data defined. Because we're using this payload.footer text, and if we go to the very top of the document here, we've got um, the main template has a parameter for payload, which corresponds to our data sources where we have a property called footer text. So here we've got footer text, and we can define, you know, change the value. And so that's, that's what you'll do a lot of uh, the time is have a APL document and a, a corresponding data sources and put all your data in here. Notice also in this data sources, we have a, an array of items and each item has a property which is a color and some text, one, two, three, four, five through seven and then different colors. We're gonna use that, that next. 
So that was our header and our footer. Let's talk about um, this next section here where we've got um, some data binding going on against that items array. So notice that we've got um, items one through uh, seven, There's, they're numbered. The first one has first, then the middle ones have next, 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 and last. And it's got that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that was shown in the, the data binding section. There's an index, which is one lower than this uh, ordinal here off to the left. There's a spot at the top that says that there's seven total items. And then there's something here at the end that says that there's an end. So let's go through that. Uh, what we've done at this, uh, and I guess the way that this works or the way to think about this is that I've got a comp container and I'm binding that container to the array of items and then I'm defining um, a, a first item which is going to be the seven item, total items, a last item which is going to be this end, and then for each item in, I've got this items uh, component or this items array. So container along with some other components are special components called multi-child component properties um, or multi-child components and they've got properties. So these are the components that allow for this multi-child and this is where it's specifying you know, data, first item, um, items, last items. So because it's a special multi-child component, it has these properties. And what happens for every child that um, is defined, then it's taking this item section, filling in data values, and replicating that over and over again. Um, so that's why we've got seven items here, because we have seven items in our uh, data, and we've bound that to our uh, containers data property. Now, um, there is a first item, and that's a, that's a, a place where component uh, you can put components that are put right before the list of items, and the last item are things that you can put right after. It doesn't um, participate in the same way with data binding as this item section do, does. So uh, in order to get the list of items, I need to, to go all the way back out to my payload.items.length, and then I can get a, a count of how many items um, are here. That's, so that's where that data binding happens. Now you'll notice that there's a couple of different when clauses, when, when, and then uh, what happens when there, is, there isn't a when. So when you create um, this data binding, each of the children get some special properties. So um, if we go here and look at um, this data binding evaluation and the component child extensions, every child in the multi-child com uh, component gets a data property, an index, an optional ordinal, and a length. So this is any data that represents the item that's in the array. This is an index of what, what, what position, uh, what number child it is. Ordinal is the same thing, but it's, it's one based. And length is the, the, how many items are in the array um, that this data belongs to. So this makes it a little bit more sense. So if I'm in this first situation, if my index is equal to zero, so this is the first item in the list, then what I'm doing is I've got my text, I'm binding my, my color to whatever the color is in the data that I've passing to this first one, which in this case is red. And then I'm also using this ordinal property, which is available, and that's where I get my one dot. And if it, since it's the first one, it's gonna say first, it's gonna say what my text is, which is one, and then the text index, and then whatever the value of index is. So you'll see that uh, that first one looks different because when I hit the second one, now my index is one. And so it doesn't hit this one. It doesn't hit this one because index plus one, which in this case would be two, doesn't equal the length of the array. So it's going to go ahead and use this one where it gives me the ordinal and it has the, the only thing that's different is this value next. So you can see that this one corresponds to all these next ones. This first uh, one right here 
corresponds to the first one in my list, and this one right here corresponds to the last one. So I really like this highlighting. So you'll always get data, and data always relates to the item that it's being bound to. So in this case, um, data is this whole object. If this was an array of strings, then data would be whatever uh, the value of that string, the, you know, string was. If it was an array of numbers, whatever that number was. But in this case, it's an object, so, so data is an object. That's why I can say data.color and data.text. Now, the other thing that, that you need to know is that you'll always get index. And if I were to hide this first item here, it doesn't affect the numbering. Index is still the same. So I don't have my first item anymore, but I still see I count two, three, four, five, six, seven, and my index is one, two, three, four, five. Um, so making something disappear doesn't change the order that it is in their array. It just makes it so you can't see it. Um, but this ordinal number is kind of special because the only reason why we get a value for ordinal is because we have on the parent, the container itself, this numbered property set to true. If we have uh, numbered um, set to false, then we don't have any ordinals um, because it's not counting ordinals. So this is um, something where we can turn on and, and get some additional ordinals here. Um, so I think that's that's the, the the gist of what we wanted to talk about here. So there's a lot that we covered here. We covered uh, data binding properties and and uh, you know in this episode we we covered data bind, data binding, data binding context, data binding expressions, data sources, and multi-child components. Uh, in the next video we'll cover the image component. I hope this video was helpful. Please let me know with a like or a share. Thank you for watching.